Let me start up a program. Just recap what we have. We have two instance cubes and the arrow in the middle. Offline, I didn't want you to watch me do this because it took a long time. But offline, I made this function called make plane. And I bet you can guess what it does. It makes a plane, and I can say what the dimensions of that plane are. In fact, let's give that a default value. We'll do a 10 by 10 plane. And in addition to help this function out, I made these private private helper functions make plane verts, make plane indices, just so I could make my codable codable code <laughs> code a little bit more readable. So when I say make plane verts, that makes the vertices for the plane. And this makes the indices for the plane. Let me just show you the plane before I actually try to describe the algorithm. I know we have a cube here, but I'm actually going to replace it with make plane. And you know the default argument for the dimensions are 10, so I'll leave that in there. Control F5, build this, run this, and we see a plane. We actually see two planes. Remember that we had two cubes, and each cube had its own transformation on it. But now that I said plane instead of cube, uh, we're getting the plane. Notice the random colors as well. Each vertex has a random color. You can see the far plane. We've talked about the far plane. The far plane cutting into my planes. That's just too many planes, I think. In fact, let's do perspective. And we'll just push this out to 20. The far plane will push out to 20 so that we don't get that clipping, or at least we don't get that clipping as soon. And I can back up and hopefully get 20 units out before I see. Yep, very good. Anyway, I hope that's enough flying space. Let's go look at my algorithm. I'm not sure if it's the best algorithm in the world. It's just an algorithm I came up with. I'll F12 on make plane. Let's look at the make plane function. And like I said, I just call make plane verts, make plane indices. I get these two shape datas. And then I just kind of combine it all together right here by saying, Here's my return that I'm going to return. Hey, go give me the plane indices, and I'll just copy that data from the indice object over into my return value. So I don't know. If, that's probably not the cleanest code, but I just wanted to move on here. Let's look at make plane verts. I'll describe the algorithm. It's pretty simple. I get my shape data. I want to return. The number of vertices is the dimensions of the plane times the dimensions of the planes. For example, if I pass in 10 here, I want a 10 by 10 plane, which would give me 100 vertices. I'll build this and run this, and hopefully you can, uh, I don't expect you to, to count these, but there's essentially 100 vertices in each plane. You can see the different colors here. Let me actually outline a few. You can tell here's a vertex, here's a vertex, here's a vertex. Vertex, vertex, vertex. You can see all the vertices. And then what my algorithm does is just connect them, render them as triangles. That was a terrible triangle. I just attempted to draw. But you can see. Hopefully hopefully you get the idea. Let's let's look at the code. I just I say, hey, let's let's figure out what half the dimensions is. And then let's instantiate the number of vertices I need. And then let's just roll through the vertices, the width and the height. That's essentially what's going on here. I is width, J is height. Maybe I should have called it width and height. But I make each vertex one by one. I give the vertex a position. I say, let's go to the jth position, minus half, so that the plane is centered on the origin. Since J starts out at zero, if I pass in 10 here, half of 10 would be five. So the first uh, vertex positions x would be 0 minus 5 would be negative 5. Same thing here, negative 5 for the z position. The y's are all the same because I want my plane flat. Recall we're using a right-handed coordinate system. And then I just say random color. I'll show you my random color. It's a helper function I probably should put in its own compilation unit, but I slapped in here at the top of my shape generator compilation unit. And I essentially call rand and divide it by rand max. And that will give me a float between 0 and 1. If rand returns rand max, then that will give me a 1. If rand returns 0, that returns 0. Anything in between will be between 0 and 1, which is what I want for my colors. So that is make plane verts. Let's look at make plane indices. It's hopefully pretty straightforward. In fact, let me actually just draw a plane here. Don't blink. And I did a 3x3 three three plane here, and what I'm saying here is row and column. So these are rows going this way, these are columns going this way. And I say, okay, we need to connect triangles. There's three 
vertices per triangle, and that's what our indices will be here. The way I connect these is first row plus column. So we'll just do row zero and column zero. Row plus column would the first indice would be this one right here. And then I connect it with row plus call plus dimensions. In this case, I have a three by three plane. So that'd be row plus call plus dimensions would bring me down here. So I connect this vertex to this vertex. And then I do the same thing, but I add one. So that's row plus call plus dimensions plus one. So my first triangle is this triangle on the plane. Roughly the same idea here. Row plus call would put me here. Row plus call plus dimensions plus one puts me here. Let me get a different color. So that's row plus call. Row plus call plus dimensions plus one would connect me here. And then row plus call plus one. Row plus call plus one puts me here. So then I connect that. And I simply just walk down the entire plane connecting all these vertices like so. The next one would go like this, like this. And we keep doing that all the way down until we hit the bottom of our plane. And that gives us our nice fluid plane. So that's the make plane code. I showed you the verts, I showed you the indices, I showed you the plane. In the next video I want to show you a teapot. The teapot is wicked cool. And then after we have the plane, the teapot, we have the cube and the arrow, we can do some really interesting things. And later on I'll show you how to create your own models or load your own models. You can model in Maya or in, in any 3D program that you like.